Hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. It's bedtime. It's been a very busy day here on the homestead. We're all tired and worn out, but we have to candle eggs. We have 10 eggs in the incubator and we're going on the end of day 14. So it's time to candle them and to see how they are progressing. I think that we're gonna have about eight out of 10 uh, that are doing pretty good, but we're gonna find out together and see how they've grown and how they are developing. So. Before we shut everything down tonight and put everything away and make check the barn one more time, we're gonna candle these eggs with you and we're gonna show you how they are progressing. We are in our bathroom and it's a, we, the reason we candle in here is because we can shut the door and keep the cats and critters or whoever out, but also there's, there's not a window. Um, the way our house is built and been added on since it was built in 1870, this was one of the side porches, old, old side porches, so they didn't add a window. So it's a good sized bathroom, but when it's dark, it's dark. So it's a great place to candle eggs. So let's get started. Okay guys, we're gonna, um, they're in the incubator. Now we have a broody hen out in the barn and she's on some eggs out there, a couple of eggs. Uh, this is our incubator and we've got, we you all chose the eggs and I ended up <laughs> putting, I think there's about every one of them in there. No, 10 out of the 12. So we're gonna find out uh, what is the situation um, here. You want to start candling your eggs between basically seven, day seven and day ten. Some folks will tell you day seven, some folks will tell you day ten. I normally do around day seven, but I didn't actually this time just because of time. So the lighting is going to change because you have to have a very dark room. So what you're going to do is you're going to get a flashlight. I just put fresh batteries in this so it's really bright. And you're going to cup it because you're going to want to funnel the light at the very end. Now, we're going to start with these dark copper moran eggs up here, these black copper, dark copper. They are dark, but black copper moran eggs, and we're going to work our way around. When you put the eggs in the incubator, okay, you want to mark each side something different. I do X's and O's, and you're going to have to turn your eggs. Some folks will tell you two day, uh, twice a day. Um, I do it three times a day just morning, afternoon, evening, or right before bed, I'll just rotate them because they need to be rotating in the egg. That's what mother hen does. So you're acting as mother, you know, mother hen. So we're gonna start up here. So they're not marked by number. They're just, we're just gonna start on this. All right, let's see how we're doing here. And we need to work a little fast because I've got the incubator open. Okay, this is what I thought. I'm starting with this one on purpose because this is a big question people ask me. How do you know if you don't have a fertilized egg? A non-fertilized egg is going to look like this. Now this is a dark egg, okay? So if it was a white egg or a green egg, it would really be bright. It looks like somebody just literally stuck a light up into it and it illuminates all the way around. You'll see that, okay? So um, we just don't have anything going on with this egg. So at this point in the game, I know for a fact that I'm wasting my time keeping it in the incubator because basically I take a risk of it exploding, if you will, or blowing up. So I don't want to risk my other eggs um, in my incubator with something like this. So I'm going to take this egg out. Okay, let's move to the next one. I'm going to try to move fast, y'all. Now look at this one. Do you see what I'm talking about? Same type of egg. And these are tricky. Look, okay, there we go. I don't know if you see that. Do you see this right down here at the bottom? That is the air sac, okay? It is harder to candle dark eggs than it is to do white or light brown or green. You'll see that in just a few minutes, okay? I have got a baby in here, it looks like, because we've got a really nice developed air sac. I do not see a bloodline. We'll talk about that maybe. And I don't know if you can make it out. So I've got the air sac down here, then it illuminates a little bit through here, and then I start seeing this really dark line. That's the baby. Okay, so we're gonna put this one back. Now I was uh, on my X's, so I'm gonna turn them point side up with my O's. Let's go to the next black copper moran egg. Look here. There's the air sac, and I can see a body. So we've got a little bit lighter over here. So you've got the air sac down here. You've got light over here, but you've got darker over in here. So the baby right now on day 14, end of day 14, is all over in this area. Let's put this one back. We are good to go. It's important to candle your eggs so that you know which eggs are fertilized and not. Okay, that's why we do this. Now this egg right here, um, you know, I will tell you right now that we, when we candled this the other day, 
Um, I was very, I've got an air sac and this one's tricky. Um, I thought that maybe the way it was lining with the um, circulatory system or the blood vessels in here, um, I was worried that I had um, a baby that died. And now that I've waited, I don't think that's the case. So that's why you want to continue to candle several times if possible, at least twice. Uh, I think we're looking good here, actually. You can see here. So we still have another week, okay? So I'm going to hold on to that one. Let's remember this one with the, um, like the calcium potentially deposits on it. Uh, we will remember that. All right, so we're gonna start moving into some lighter eggs and hopefully I'll have to situate these. Um, all right, let's start moving fast, y'all. I gotta get them back under the heat. Okay, green egg, green eggs and ham. Got a great um, air sac there. You got your dark spot. I don't know if you can see um, down here, when the eggs are a little bit younger, seven to 10 days, you can see a lot of the blood vessels and lining through there. Can, I don't know if you can see that down in there. It's hard to see. See the baby's gotten whole, you know, got the embryo, I call them babies. The embryo's gotten bigger, so you're seeing less of that, but you'll see um, the, the blood vessels and all of the things going on in the egg. Um, all right, now, now we're gonna grab Coco's. My big khaki colored eggs from an Easter eggger are Miss Coco's. All right, so again, let me, let me get it right here. All right, looky there. You've got a nice air sac. You've got a distinction from the light spot to a dark, which is the baby. Uh, the baby is actually moving. I don't know if you can see that. It's very tricky. They've got some special little gadgets that you can get to candle and see all sorts of things. I'm gonna get one, but I don't have one currently, so we just go with the old method. It, the baby is actually moving in this egg, so we have live action, as they say here. Live action. All right, let's put it back. Doing good so far. So far, pretty good. Okay, look here. Can you see that circulatory system? Can you see all the vessels in there? I know it's so difficult. Uh, we have a lot of vessels in here. You have the air sac. You've got a cat crying to get into the bathroom. He's upset because mom's in here and he's not. It's bedtime. All right, we got a good egg here. So far, we're doing really, really, really good. All right, three more to go. Now here's the brown eggs. We're getting to the light brown eggs. Um, and again, with so many chickens, uh, we could have just about anything out there. Looky there. They look totally different. So there's your air sac. Again, right there at the bottom, that rounded edge right there, that really light. I'm trying to make sure that I'm cupping that light for you. Is it cupping pretty good? Okay. Um, there's an X, and there's the baby. You can see it right up in there. Excuse me, the embryo. Psh baby. All right, we're going to put this back. Two more. Looks like we might be nine for ten, hopefully. Let's pray so. All right. Air sac. See that? I don't see any bloodlines. The bloodline is, is, is when you have this distinct dark red line. You'll know it when you see it. It can be a partial bloodline. That mean, usually means a, you know, a sign of early death. I'm not seeing anything of the sort. Um, how's that one? We've got, uh, again, the air sac at the bottom. Okay, that's important. It's one of the first things you see. And um, you can see I'm rotating the egg around and you go from light to dark. That's where that's where, oh, it went on down. <laughs> uh, that's where it's lying. All right, so here's what we've got. We've got nine out of the 10 for sure. Again, um, we are on day um, 14, almost 15 actually. I, I pushed this one a little bit, but um, it does allow you to know, and I've got it in the incubator. Um, we do keep the water, the little tray filled so that it does um, keep the humidity up. I'm gonna keep them going. I may look at these real quick one more time at the end of day 17, just to make sure everybody's looking good and everything's okay. And we hit day 18, we stop, I, we stop candling. They go into their lockdown period, okay? So we wanted to show you this. I hope this helps you out. I've had a ton of questions about candling. I hope you see what we're seeing here. I'm hoping to do a video on a full um, deal on this, but this helps everybody. It is important to candle your eggs, and it's also important to get them back underneath the heat here 
which is what I'm going to do. And we just appreciate y'all watching here at Appalachia's Homestead. We'll keep you posted. These are going to be, hopefully, Miss Winona's babies. Uh, that was the whole point. We got these babies in here. Um, you're not guaranteed anything with the incubator. You're not guaranteed any, you know, anything with a broody hen. But uh, I found out the last time that I found out that um, I just think it's really good to um, have them working simultaneously. Because if you've got a broody hen and she doesn't have a lot of babies hatch out with her, she can raise these babies for you. And that's a, the best case scenario if you've got a good broody. Appreciate y'all watching. Check us out on Facebook and like us here on YouTube. And be sure to subscribe. And we'll talk to you guys soon. And don't forget about all the cool stuff in uh, Pinterest and Instagram and we're, our blog and everything. So good luck with your eggs. And we'll talk to y'all soon.